that are too close to you in traffic. <laughs> okay, guys. So, uh, random video here. Uh, so, <laughs> driving along, taking a buddy's wife's Kia to the dealership, and it, uh, it's decided that uh, it didn't want the bottom end to be all one piece. It has come from together. Uh, so we were talking about putting a parachute mount on the Mustang that we have on the channel, the 2019 GT. And But not for a parachute, but for a hitch for doing a trailer for me and Joey to go on like Rocky Mountain Race Week or something along those lines. We're really not too terribly far from Nebraska, so I think it'd be a lot of fun for us to do. But, uh, oh, Matt, he's... He thinks a little different. <laughs> Okay, so y'all know from the channel that Joey thinks a little different. That's true. His face is a little different. <sighs> it is, but Matt, Matt takes things a step further. So Matt is, for all of you iPhone fans, Matt is extremely against iPhone. Uh, and anything the fact Apple. that, that yeah, anything Apple, but so it takes it to the extreme that his truck might as well be a Google Home hub. Um, he can tell Google to start his truck and it'll start his truck and all sorts of things. So quite fun. So Matt just come up with the craziest of ideas. So we all know in the, in the racer game, in the drag racing game, you, you gap somebody in a street race. What do you do? You flip the hazards. Kind of just a, a sign of disrespect. Well, Matt just took that to the extreme. Um, and when I say the extreme, it's definitely something that would not be track appropriate. Track officials would lose their minds if, if you, I mean, unless you didn't like the track. Um, if you didn't like the track you were leaving, this is definitely one of those, do it and don't stop. Take the pit exit, don't go past the, the, the ticket counter, nothing, just straight on out. So Matt says, put the parachute up, but remove the parachute and pack it with a glitter conf confetti bomb. So let that sink in for a second. You're, you're racing Johnny, whatever his name is, um, and and he thinks he's fast, and he's got. I, I don't want to offend people, but he's got third gen Camaro that he just thinks can't lose. So you get out there, you challenge him to a race, you slap your cameras on. He gets a little cocky because you put the GoPro facing backwards so that you can watch the race. Little does he know when you take him to Gapplebee's, <laughs> right as soon as you cross the line, instead of flipping the hazards, you rip the cord on your parachute and poof, glitter bomb. <laughs> so now Johnny No Name has freaked out because he doesn't know what's going on. He has locked up the brakes. And uh, everybody's laughing. And now for me, kind of a little guy. I don't really fight. So I. it might be a good thing if I did this, especially because we all know that Johnny No Name is going to be a backwoods redneck that probably had already been drinking and shouldn't have been driving anyway. <laughs> but now he wants to fight you. Because not only did you beat his car that couldn't be beat, but you embarrassed him really, really bad. Or, you know, you have those assholes that follow you too closely in traffic. You know, I'm pretty sure doing 70 down the interstate, riding my ass, popped a glitter bomb on you. You'd probably back up a little bit. So, that does remind me of a car story. So, let's get into a car story. So, our town used to be have a pretty decent car scene. Would, would you all agree? Yeah, yeah it was pretty decent. Back in the early 2000s. I mean, yeah, back 
been the Fast and Furious days. I mean, back, back then, that's all anyone had to spend money on back then. Because there's no entertainment, no nothing to do in the town. The only thing to do was to spend money on beer or your truck. And so, because of that, also remember this is the early 2000s, and we live in in backwoods rural America. Um, and so, there was not everybody had a cell phone. Um, I mean, remember, early 2000s, hey, cell phones were not a thing. Hey, we rolled with the walkie-talkies like they did in Fast and the Furious. That's right, next to walkie-talkies. Uh, sad company that happened to go away. No <laughs> more next to Sprint Yeah, let's, don't, let's not get started on Sprint. Uh, so, because of that, you ran to the main drag in town around 10, 11 o'clock. And you knew your buddy was going to be there. You just had to travel the, the couple of miles strip, figure out which parking lot he was sitting in. And uh, so at that time, I, uh, I had just gotten a wreck. I had a 99 extended cab, uh, 3.0 liter, two-wheel drive, five-speed V6 because hashtag save the manuals. And... Uh, it, it got rear-ended. Funny story on that later on. And it, it, it totaled, out my, totaled out my truck. So I wanted to get back into the car scene. I uh, was trying to build my 91 Civic SI hatch. Uh, and I was, I was still having some money issues. I mean, it was high school. So I was actually able to save money buying this truck. Lost it, so then I needed another vehicle because the car still wasn't together. So I bought a 95 GST Eclipse. So second gen turbo front wheel drive Eclipse. Great fun. But I got tired of people riding up on me and, uh, you know, not having the common decency to at least pull my hair while they're riding on my backside. And so, me and a buddy of mine, he had a first gen uh, Plymouth Laser that uh, to cheat the insurance company, it was a 1.6 liter dual overhead cam automatic Plymouth Laser. He gutted it and converted it to a 4G63 five speed manual car. So then he went from 1.6 non-turbo automatic to, what was it, 4G63? What was that? Two liter? Yeah. I think. I think it was two liter. I'll, I'll fix that here if that's wrong. Um, turbo, five speed, it basically turned it into a GST Eclipse as well. Um, and so while we were in high school, we decided to play a, a funny joke on the Eclipses. You could, it had a rear windshield wiper or a rear wiper, sorry. And with it, you could push a button and just spray the fluid on the windshield so you didn't wipe on a dry windshield. Well, you could take a pin or a, a little flat blade screwdriver and you could aim that nozzle sprayer up. And it had enough power that you could aim it up high enough that you could actually spray the windshield of the vehicle behind you, even if it was a truck. So we did that. And one night, um, a, another friend of ours in high school, he joined the military, um, support your local troops. Uh, thank you for all y'all do. He joined the military and with a sign on bonus, he turboed his 94 Civic. Uh, it was a DX car, nothing fancy, but it was a 1.6 single overhead cam VTEC car. And he wanted to see how it how it worked. Uh, so we were running along. Guy decided to try and push us down the highway. So uh, I slid the sunroof back, flipped him off, sprayed him with this stuff. He almost wrecked. I don't know what he thought I was spraying on him. It was just washer fluid, but great fun. So if we upgraded from washer fluid to confetti, Now we got projects. So go ahead. We, we don't ask you to do this much, but go ahead. Like and comment down below. If you think it'd be funny and we should figure out a way to convert a parachute mount on the back.
Mustang. Now granted guys, has zero power, power adders. So 150 is not something that that car is gonna see in a quarter mile at all. But I will, y'all like and comment, share with your friends and get enough, what, what should we say, Joey? For us, that's pretty big. So, yeah. a thousand views on this video, a thousand views, and Matt, Joey, and I will figure out a way to make a confetti cannon out of a parachute from BMR or one of the other guys. So, unfortunately, we're too small, so I guess I'm out the money for a parachute. So, that'll be fun. I don't know how much that is, but... It wouldn't have to be a parachute mount. I was just thinking if you were already getting the parachute mount, instead of a parachute flying out. Okay, so so at least, I'll at least buy the BMR bracket, because then it's multi-use, because then I can pull the trailer for all of our stuff when we end up going to Rocky Mountain Race Week, and going into the 13 class, and having some fun. Or, should we just drive... <laughs> My Toyota to Rocky Mountain Race Week. <laughs> Robert doesn't think it'll make it. Or, or should Robert buy a 3000 GT and get it done with? Oh, a 3000? I drove that 3000 once. It was awesome, wasn't it? Matt was so drunk, he wanted more alcohol and told me, get in the car, I think, I think I've got a boost leak. I'm gonna <laughs> data log, I'm gonna data log you drive. Apparently, in a residential neighborhood, 98% throttle is not getting on it all the way at, I don't know, midnight, 1 o'clock. It was late. I don't remember. Yeah, he's leaving my house. It was a long time ago. In Mexico. Uh, in, in, yeah, Mexico. Ah, statute of limitations. Okay, <laughs> so, a couple things. One, I... With a 3000, you always have a boost. <laughs> so, <laughs> I found that out with Supras as well. Yeah. You always have a boost leak. Uh, I had the white pipe blow off with the damn van trying to overtake me. The, the van had a soccer mom in it, and she was being the <laughs> <laughs> And she was as fast as the 3000. And <laughs> she, and we were on the two lane, you know, at Walmart going north. You know where it merges into single lane, and I, I took off faster than her, but then she she gunned it from the stoplight and was riding next to me and wouldn't let me get over so we could merge into one lane. Oh, there's the boost. So I was thinking, okay, I'm just gonna gun it a bit, and uh, yeah, my pipe blew off about two seconds into me throttling it. She did the same thing, so she actually blew past me in the damn van. The damn pipe blew off. And Matt got beat by a soccer ball. And okay. I got beat by Moral a soccer Moral of the story, 3000 GT built. Uh, there was a lot of money in that car. Loses to soccer mom van. Yeah. Just saying. Why buy a 3000 and be impractical? Sorry, I know that I can see that the screen is getting super shaky. Our trailer sucks. Joey got to figure out a, a speed better. I'm doing 75 in a 60. <laughs> there, it's smoothing out. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, it's a stupid road. Moral of the story is be practical. Buy a minivan. And you be she didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> oh, oh, see no. You again. <laughs> no, I did end up his uh, Ranger he was talking about earlier in the video. I actually did buy my Ranger. Buy the Ranger like years 10 later. owners later. <laughs> uh, I was second owner of this Ranger. Yeah, so I had it at my house and he comes by and he's like, hold on. I think that's my old Ranger. Uh, and I literally bought it for 100 bucks. No, it was 500 bucks. 500? Yeah, I bought I bought his old Ranger for 500 bucks, and I bought a 1998 uh, Ford Explorer Limited. I bought it from the engine because I was going to put the engine and the all wheel drive actually in the, the, the Ranger that have a uh, V8 all wheel drive Ranger. And as you'll so. find out, Matt <laughs> doesn't finish his projects. <laughs> <laughs> that project left well, before it got started. Uh, it, it 
didn't leave before I got started. But <laughs> if if you remember earlier talking about the wife made me get rid of the lawn ornament, which was the three thousand, uh, I don't get to keep very many, very much stuff that gets that doesn't get used. I've got one. So what what do we do? Um, comment below if we get a thousand comments. We'll get Matt to, okay, so here was the thing. Matt was either going to fix and rebuild the 3000, or if I remember correctly, the 3000 was gonna go bye-bye for a Viper. Thousand comments on this video, Matt gets a Viper. We bring it to the channel. There's not many Viper footages out there. I did, for those of y'all that know, I did get my entries in for it's just the sixes Viper. And if that's the case, we'll have, uh, I think it's a third gen Viper. I don't remember offhand. I'm horrible with my memory. But a third gen built, fully built Viper to the channel. So, thousand comments. Matt buys a Viper. We bring it to the channel. You want Viper comment I, or I content? I buy Viper out. at a reasonable price. Reasonable uh, price for a Viper. 1993 RT10, uh, red, white racing stripes, uh, typically around 10,000 miles. So Matt's going to spend seventy thousand dollars on a Viper. No, no, and let's let's nice. remember let's remember, guys. First generation Viper, no top, didn't come with one. It was also, a, it was it was an always Targa. They forgot to supply the. It's the, the most top. American car ever made. It, it is. It, it's all the horsepower. And none of the frills. There's uh, no, I mean, it's got frills. No, you step on the gas, it yeah. kicks sideways. There's, you hit the brakes. No, no ABS. There's no traction control. No ABS. So when I first wanted that Viper, by the way, was the <laughs> McDonald's Monopoly thing back in the <laughs> oh yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Instead of the million dollars, I think it was the Viper. Is what they had as the grand prize. That you had. Mustang. Not 100% sure how yet, but we're going to figure it out. So We're going to pop it like we're TI in Atlanta. 